Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. Let's go back out to Washington where Frank Luntz and his focus group address the battle between the unions and the politicians with another very special guest. One of the big stories of 2011 has been the conflict between organized labor, business, and government. It seems like every week a new state erupts in some sort of controversy. We have the opportunity to show those people behind us, 29 average Americans, ads in favor and against the union. One ad particularly stood out. The higher you see the lines climb, the more favorable the ad. Let's take a look. Governor Walker and the Republicans just gave over $100 million in tax cuts to corporations. And now they're asking teachers and nurses to pay for it. And attacking workers' rights to negotiate for fair benefits. It will probably cost us between four and five hundred a month in income. I've tried not to think about it, just be out here on the square. It's not selfish, it's just survival. I'm just a secretary, and this bill that Walker's proposing is going to cost me over $3,000 a year, not to mention more down the road when we lose our collective bargaining rights. I believe that the issues that are being discussed here in Madison are not unique to Madison or the state of Wisconsin. These are national issues. Money is being taken away from workers and the tax breaks given to major corporations. This is Republican class warfare, an attack on the middle class. This is a battle we need to win. Republican class warfare, a battle we need to win. Why was that ad so impactful to you? You're nodding your head no. Explain. That ad makes me so angry. Why? Because it's not true. It's, that, it's not about Republicans and Democrats. It's, it's strictly about realities. And, and if they want to make it class warfare, I get even angrier. It's not class warfare, and that's just it, that those are hardworking people, and they're not feeling like their government's representing them, and that's where there's the problem. Because whoever is being they're, they're elected isn't they're, doing their job. The government's not representing they're, them for the, purely for the fact that they're, they think they're taking away their money, and it's an ad purely just based off of, hey, I feel this way. Dollars. We got this way by granting them these incomes and these, mm -hmm. these special benefits and things like that. And now the fact that a government's getting responsible and trying to tailor back so they can run fiscally responsible, which is great, mm -hmm. Now it's all of a sudden, all oh, a sudden. they're just attacking us and taking away our money. So let's go to the expert. Liz Schuler, Secretary Treasurer of the AFL-CIO, the first woman elected to a position of that level, correct? Correct. Do we still need unions in 2011? And is it possible that the unions may have gone too far, may have yelled too much that there could have been some way to alleviate the tension between them? And I want you to react to her position. Everyone turn to 50. Unions are more relevant today in our society than ever before. And I would ask you in the audience and the vi uh, viewers at home, um, can we take for granted anymore in today's economy that we can find a good job, that we can find a job that pays benefits, that uh, actually pays enough to send your kids to college. And um, sometimes people are working two jobs uh, to provide for their families these days. And um, I think there's a lot of anxiety and frustration out there in the economy. And uh, I think there's two ways you could handle it. One would be uh, to go to your boss and say, I've been working harder than ever, I've been more productive, but my wages have been stagnant for a very long time, I need a raise. And your boss could do the Donald Trump line and say, you're fired. Uh, or you could join together with your coworkers, uh, strengthen numbers, and actually come together with a common voice uh, to figure out a way to participate in your workplace and actually improve your wages and benefits. Did she win you over, yes or no? No, absolutely not. Why not? Because, you know, I respect your position where you're coming from for sure, but the laws of economics still apply. If collective bar bargaining and unions actually hurt the institution which you work for and the job goes away and the company goes away, gosh, what do we do then? Yeah. We're not going to college, we're not, we're not doing anything. Well, the company going away, we've seen a lot of that. I mean, there's been a lot of offshoring, and certainly our tax code has a lot to do with that, providing some incentives for companies to leave the country. But also, why are we blaming workers in terms of um, you know, putting it on the backs of the workers as to why a company why isn't succeeding? Why are, why are some of the most vibrant companies in the United States non-union? We Actually, workers, when they're given the opportunity to have a voice, will work cooperatively with companies and we actually have many examples in the union movement where we come together as partners and actually 
find common sense solutions to make the company more efficient. I mean, who better than the workers on the front lines to help a company think this creatively? Not, but why should you be more protected than any other company or any other uh, worker? Because unions do, are not accountable. For instance, why should the teachers be more protected when you are not producing good students? Out of the Western uh, uh, economies, we have the lowest uh, scores. Why is that when you're paying, being paid very well? Go ahead. Teachers are some of the hardest working people in our country, oh, and I know a lot of I'm teachers who are actually I'm so sick of it. For, for Pete's sakes, if my kids can read, and you firefighters have to Hold on. and nurses. Hard working. I happen to be a teacher, and I work very hard. Teachers, absolutely wrong. Teachers work very hard. Hold on. Look, look at what just happened here. Look at what just happened here. Everybody was quiet, and everybody was calm, and suddenly, when it got into teachers, you lost it. And you lost it. I've watched my kids suffer in 10 years. I'm not standing by this line. I'll tell you what. Teachers, I know multiple people. Wait, wait, wait. Liz, this causes a, a, I mean, you watched it there. Mm -hmm. Everybody grab your dials. Let's do it one more time. How would you respond to that outburst by these people? Well, I think teachers and firefighters and public servants are actually very hardworking people. Have we had experiences with maybe bad apples here and there in every workplace, whether it's union or non-union? And in fact, uh, unions want to be part of the solution. We want to come to the table and work with management to make companies succeed. And I think we can be part of being creative, helping companies be more efficient and more productive in today's global economy. Now I understand why Wisconsin looks like it does and sounds like it does. I want to thank you very much for participating. And still to come, the most powerful political ad so far this year. You're going to see second-by-second -second reaction to the message that got voters talking. That much more coming up straight ahead.